The Pokemon world is filled with many fantastical creatures. From the vast lands, to the depths of the seas, and the limitless skies, it truly is an amazing world. However, there's another amazing world with creatures just as fantastic. Your world. The planet is filled with amazing creatures that have unique and impressive abilities. My name is Ranger Rai, and I'm here to help bridge the gap between the Pokemon world and your world. So please, join me as we go through my Ranger Logs and we talk about Pokemon and their real world inspirations. Insects are such a divisive group of creatures that are both off-putting and remarkable at the same time. Their strength, speed, and durability are sights to behold when examined a bit closer. Humans have also had some impressive feats over the centuries, learning and adapting over time to ensure their survival, something we have in common with insects. Today, I want to discuss a Pokemon line that has done just that in perhaps one of the most impressive ways possible. Here's a Pokemon requested by all of my amazing Twitter followers. It's the Scizor line. Before we begin, I'd just like to encourage you all to like, share, and subscribe to the Ranger Base. It helps this channel grow, so I can keep making more content like this for you all. Let's try to get to 500 subscribers, because I have a great new video plan for my next milestone. But for now, let's talk about this Metallic Mantis. Now, while Scizor is arguably the more powerful stage in this evolutionary line, there is still so much to discuss regarding its pre-evolution. As we begin with Scyther, let's break down its physical appearance. Scyther is known as the Mantis Pokemon, for obvious reasons, as its body, color, hands, and wings are all inspired from the Mantis family of insects. Most commonly known as the Praying Mantis due to the position they put their forelegs when cleaning, eating, or resting that resembles a praying gesture. Scyther has pretty much an exact design from this insect aside from its size and its legs. These two traits would be incredibly terrifying if a mantis was this size. However, Scyther has one more inspiration, the dinosaur. Claws and fangs are pretty unusual for an insect with an abnormal pair of appendages like this, but a reptile would usually have these as a standard feature. Along with its claws and fangs, the legs resemble the same legs of a Dromeo serrate. Also known as running lizards, these reptiles were originally feathered dinosaurs of a medium size. These dinosaurs are also known as raptors, which is incredibly accurate as we discuss one of Scyther's best known attributes, its speed. Scyther's speed is one of its highest stats. Combined with its wings and flying typing, it has access to some incredibly speedy and high priority moves like Quick Attack or Aerial Ace. Similarly, the Mantis has two pairs of wings for short gliding and travel, much like a Scyther with its limited flight. Now, Scyther's speed ties heavily into its Pokedex entries, which states that it has ninja-like abilities. You might wonder how a Pokemon that looks like this could possibly even be remotely ninja-like. Believe it or not, there is a lot of solid evidence for this reptilian bug to be a ninja. Firstly, let's discuss ninjas for a bit. Ninjas had a few notable traits, mainly that they were known to blend into their surroundings without a trace. As well, they were usually trained to strike fast and deadly. Also, ninjas were pretty lightweight and not too tall, allowing them to move and lift themselves up into high places where they could not be seen. So let's look at Scyther and its attributes. Its green color is a perfect choice for it to hide in trees and tall grass, allowing them to sneak attack prey or hide from predators. And believe it or not, but a mantis does these exact same things, as it can easily hide among tall grass or leaves to ambush its prey. This natural camouflage has worked well for this Pokemon and insect survival. Another important attribute of Scyther's biology is its size. Scyther on average is about 4 foot 11 and weighs about 125 pounds. These attributes are perfect for human-sized creatures that partake in the ninja arts. Historically, ninjas weighed around 120 pounds, so their footsteps would make less sound, and so they could hide in trees and high corners with little effort. On top of that, its leg build makes it an impressive creature of speed, stealth, and deadly precision. Not too far off, a mantis is a surprisingly fast insect, so I would say that Scyther's influence is incredibly spot on. As for attacking enemies, Scyther is an expert at precision slashes and strikes, so much so that its Japanese name is actually Strike. Ninjas were known to be experts of many different weapons that could be concealed and were originally designed as gardening tools. 
One such legend says that a simple farmer was cutting rice in his field when he was attacked by a samurai and used a sickle tool to defeat his enemy. While the level of truth in this story is up for debate, sickle tools have been featured a lot in ninja media over the decades because of this legend. Another ninja connection to Scyther is how some ninjas used animals and insects as tools to confuse and avoid enemies. Some ninjas use small animals to distract an enemy off of their trail, whereas other ninjas actually used a bag of insects to surprise enemies and cause confusion on their target. It's a little crazy, but hey, it seems to have worked. Scyther is strong enough to cut through a large tree in one slice, and it uses hard objects to sharpen its blade, as well as sharpening them in combat. Speaking of combat, Scythers will fight for dominance when in a small swarm, with the winner taking control of the swarm and the loser being exiled from the group in shame. Now this brings us to the topic of wild Scythers and where to find them. To be honest, it's a little tricky to pin down exactly where to find these guys for a few reasons. The first reason is because they are a roaming species that don't have an exact nesting area. While there may be some more popular spots they might appear in, they tend to go wherever they can have an advantage over prey or break away from a group if they can do better on their own. Similarly, ninjas don't stay in one place for too long. However, they were traditionally farmers who became assassins due to necessity. It would be reasonable that a ninja would be constantly on the move, making sure to never be caught and avoid being seen or known. The second reason is that Scyther doesn't have many natural predators, and is more of a predator itself. Its size, power, and speed make it a force to be reckoned with. All of these things combined make Scyther an excellent ninja Pokemon in the wild. If you're interested in another Pokemon with some surprisingly ninja-like traits, I would definitely recommend checking out my Ranger Log on Crobat in the icon above. There were so many new things I learned about bats. Like, did you know that bats can adopt? That's such a rare thing for an animal to do in the wild. I highly recommend that episode. Now, something unique to Scyther is that it doesn't need to evolve to be strong. As a matter of fact, it will not evolve naturally in the wild. The only way to obtain a Scizor is by catching a Scyther and trading it with a held item called a Metal Coat. This item is a special case as it only has two uses. The first is that it can increase the attack power of Steel-type moves. The second is the special ability to make certain Pokémon evolve into a Pokémon with an added Steel typing. This makes so much sense because it's called the Metal Coat. Some people may have found this confusing since it looks like a battery or some kind of ratchet bit. However, it's actually a container of metal coating. Think like a container of wax or polish. It's opened and spread on the outside of the Pokémon, changing it completely with a steel coating. It's like these Pokémon are getting a full polish during the trade, with Scyther getting a metal covering added to its already hard exoskeleton and sharp blades for hands. This is so amazing. However, it does make me wonder why or how someone discovered this evolution. I have a hypothesis. Perhaps a trainer decided to polish their Scyther's blades in metal to give them a sharper edge, and it just adapted to the change before it was traded away. Sometimes that's really all it takes for something to make a change in the world. Now let's discuss Scizor and why its coating is so important for its survival. When evolved, Scizor will change pretty drastically from Scyther, with its body becoming sleeker and leaner, losing a lot of reptilian traits. Most notably, its sharp blade-like forearms have transformed into powerful pincers. And if you haven't noticed already, it loses its green coloration that would give it perfect camouflage in the wild, most likely because it no longer needs to hide, as its color is now a bright red that would make a fire truck jealous. You might believe that these two Pokemon were made to look cool, however there are a lot of impressive connections and natural advancements to these two. Why don't we start with its insect inspirations and just why its blades have turned into claws. Scyther was primarily inspired by the Mantis family of insects, and this does carry over into Scizor. However, it's a bit deeper now, as it's now inspired by the Mantis mimicking Mantid flies, which like the name implies, is an insect that takes the appearance of a Mantis with similar attributes. Scizor has a similar build to Scyther, however the red coloring is based off of another insect, the Fire Ant. Looking at them side by side, Scizor does embody a lot of the Fire Ant's traits, mainly the color and the smooth body design. However, you may wonder why its blades have transformed into these large round claws. This was an interesting find, as I wondered why a Mantis-inspired Pokémon would gain claws. However, I realized that its original inspirations have shifted more towards the Mantid flies, and it now is impersonating a Mantis. And a part of impersonation is adapting to change. 
Scizor is inspired by fire ants, and one thing a fire ant is known for is its biting powers. And seeing as ants don't have claws or stingers, their pincers are their most powerful weapons. That means that these claws are inspired by a fire ant's head, which makes a lot of sense when I point this fact out to you. You see these spots on the side of the claws? Don't you think they resemble another creature's head? In fact, it almost looks like a trap pinch's head. This resemblance to another creature is known as Beastian Mimicry, something I discussed much more in detail in my Crawdon episode, which you can see here. Basically, Beastian Mimicry is when one creature takes on a similar appearance to a predator, so it has better chances of scaring off other predators and intimidating much easier prey. However, Scizor is already a predator, so it seems like this is more for intimidation and confusion, something that actually still ties into its ninja-like traits. In fact, I'd say that Scizor losing more of its traditional insect attributes and adding on more metallic armor is very ninja, as it was a ninja's job to learn, adapt, and survive. Since we are talking about adapting, let's discuss Scizor's one major weakness and how it was adapted. You might notice that Scizor still has its wings like its previous form. However, you might not have realized that not only is it covered in metal, but its muscles are covered as well. Because of this size increase and the nature of metals and friction, Scizor's body heats up quite frequently. You may wonder why a Pokemon would be designed to have such an issue internally, and that might be a reference to a fire ant and their incredibly painful bites that can give a serious burning pain, and it might explain why it has such a large weakness to fire types. However, Scizor's wings no longer serve much use for flying, but they can be vibrated to help regulate its heat. This is such a double-edged sword for a Pokemon, but it's extremely impressive how well it has adjusted to its new form and how well designed it is. Oh, and now here's something I've been waiting to discuss for a while now. The Act of Mega Evolution. Scizor is a rare Pokemon that has the unique ability to undergo a new evolution for a short time, gaining incredible power whenever it has a powerful bond with its trainer. Mega Evolution is a simulated evolution of a Pokemon advancing thousands of years to adjust to intense climates and conditions. Mega Scizor is incredibly powerful, as its claws have become bigger, longer, and have gained spikes on the inside, much like the teeth inside of a predator's mouth. There isn't too much to add on for this form though, as it mainly adds on to its original design. Those add-ons, however, do resemble armor, something that Ninja would adorn if they knew combat was coming. I have actually realized that the evolution of Scyther to Mega Scizor does parallel the growth of a low-class loner ninja into a more trained and refined warrior before finally becoming a powerful shinobi and an armor-clad warrior. One last thing to say about Mega Scizor is that it actually cannot maintain this form due to the fact that the energy it gives off from Mega Evolving actually can cause its body to melt. This Pokemon just exudes power, and it shows just how strong any creature can be despite its origins or inspirations. But that's just another amazing example of the close relations between the Pokemon world and the real world. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the Ranger Base, and follow on Twitch and Twitter to stay up to date with all the latest things happening here. And as always, keep exploring trainers!